That's right, my friends, Wade for the King Report back here with you once again for another installment of Walt Disney World in Pandemic Dining Edition. Today, it is all about the num nums. Yes, indeed. But before we get started, just want to remind you lots of great content on Disney World in Pandemic. Make sure you're subscribed to us and that you give us a big thumbs up if you appreciate the content. It really helps the video perform and lets us know that you are looking forward to more videos on this subject matter. Today's adventure brings us to Disney's Animal Kingdom Park. It's a zoological park dedicated to and themed around animal conservation and, of course, the environment. Something that Walt Disney himself believed in and promoted quite a bit. And the park did open on Earth Day, April 22nd, 1998. Covers a total of 580 acres, making it the largest theme park in the world. And although Animal Kingdom has fewer visitors than the three other Walt Disney World theme parks, it still does roughly receive about 11 million visitors per year and is the uh, seventh most visited theme park in the world. Our big thanks to Magical Guides for that information. It is a park that is seeing roughly the lowest attendance in all of the Disney parks right now during pandemic, but makes for a very intimate experience, no doubt. Of course, the center of all things at Animal Kingdom, its Cinderella Castle, if you will, is the Tree of Life. Standing at 145 feet tall and 50 feet wide, you know, it took three Disney Imagineers, 10 artists, and 18 months to carve 325 reptiles, mammals, and birds into the tree. And there are over 7,000 artificial branches and more than 103,000 artificial leaves, all hand-placed. Some of the branches are even made to be flexible and sway with the wind. The Tree of Life is a sight to behold and definitely a fitting icon for a park all about nature and conservation. On our way to get our grub, you see Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, and Pluto all headed our way on a floating barge. This is how they're doing character experiences at Disney's Animal Kingdom right now. It is a great way to still say hello, and if you measure it upright, you can still capture that perfect selfie with your favorite character in the background. We round the corner, and here we are at today's destination, Tiffin's on Discovery Island. This is an upscale dining restaurant in Animal Kingdom that I have never been to until today. It is my first time, and I've heard so much about it. This is also a restaurant that most of us pass on the way to Pandora World of Avatar. You see that path right in front of us there? That goes directly to Pandora. And this is a restaurant that's sort of on the outer rim of Discovery Island, so it's definitely one that the majority of people pass and probably don't even notice, and that is because I think it's very unassuming. I've walked past it hundreds of times and never given it a second thought, but with the pandemic going on, so many restaurants are closed or have yet to reopen, and therefore it limits your options as to what you can do and experience, hence the line you see outside, a lot of people waiting for their tables, and it was pretty much booked up. This is the Nomad Lounge, they walked me through here just as soon as the My Disney Experience app let me know that my table was ready, I met at the host stand, and uh, they brought me on in. They asked me to go ahead and sanitize before stepping through the portal uh, that would take me into the dining areas. The Nomad Lounge is definitely a hop-in place still. Uh, however, once you sit down at your table, then you can order a drink. The bar is not taking walk-up service. In my dining room, I'm sat here with my QR code. My QR code scanned with my phone will then bring up the menu for the day. They also uh, brought out a paper menu that had all of the beverage listings, all of your specialty alcoholic beverage selections, which apparently Tiffin's has a huge variety of. I would not be partaking in uh, any of the alcohol today, but definitely good to know, definitely good to see that uh, this extensive list still exists. Tiffin's invites you to set off on a culinary expedition of international cuisine at this restaurant inspired by exploration and adventure. As you take a look around this dining room, they had others, uh, you'll notice lots of artifacts and knickknacks on the wall, lots of things to walk up and go take a look at. They do ask that you put your mask back on if you're going to do that because you're hovering around people's tables, but this is definitely an environment that kind of harkens to all of the exploration done by the Imagineers to help build the theme park, so you'll see a lot of photos. A lot of artifacts that they brought back from Africa and their adventures abroad to build the park. 
Within a matter of minutes, my server had arrived to explain to me that the digital menu was kind of a scaled down version of what they normally offer due to the pandemic, but he did recommend that I try out the spiced chickpea falafel as an appetizer. This is mint pistachio pesto, cumin scented garlic riata, and pickled vegetables, all for 10 bucks, and he said uh, I'll bring it to you right away. He uh, swapped into that kitchen, grabbed it for me, and out it came. Alongside this was also a complimentary bread service. Now, they do have a uh, upcharge bread service as well. This is the free version. He let me know that because obviously I'm solo, I had two slices here. He said, if you want any more, just let me know. I'll be sure to bring it to you. Uh, but, you know, this is on the house. So uh, definitely a nice touch of Tiffin's to have that complimentary bread service in an environment like this. Now, I don't know if you're a fan of all things pesto, but I feel like pesto isn't on enough things in life, and therefore when I heard it was going to be a prominent feature of this appetizer, I screamed silently in my heart, of course, <laughs> and I decided that this was going to be for me. Not only did he recommend it, my server did, but uh, when I heard pesto, I thought, yep, all systems go here, and you can apply it liberally to anything uh, with this spicy chickpea falafel. It was so good, and I was thoroughly impressed with just how delicious this ended up being. I mean, the, the pickled uh, aftertaste of the vegetables lent to all of this a fantastic flavor profile. The uh, cumin-scented garlic riata made everything on this plate so satisfying. In fact, I could have just eaten that and been fine, given how hot it was outside and I was just looking for something a little bit lighter, but I had already ordered my entree. Complimentary bread service here. I kind of thought this bread was going to be sweet based on the looks. Uh, it ended up being quite bitter, uh, so it was a surprise, and I liked it. Uh, not too bad. I just, you know, when you go to eat something and you think it's going to be sweet, and then you're shocked that it's bitter, it takes a second to uh, step back and go, ah, not what I thought it was going to be. Main course time had arrived, and my attempt at eating a little lighter for this meal was met with this. The North African Spiced Tofu Plate. Shermola marinated tofu, seasonal vegetables, wilted kale, and tomato chutney. This was a plate piled high with the veggies all over that perfectly browned tofu. This is like Expedition Everest of vegetables. That's what this was. <laughs> it was so great. And I couldn't believe the density in this tofu. Um, I could have been eating meat for all I knew. Uh, that's how dense and thick and perfectly warmed this tofu ended up being. Uh, it's also a very pretty plate as you saw there. One that I, I hate messing up. When somebody brings me a plate that's beautiful enough to just be a photo, I kind of hesitate on diving in to eat because I'm like, I don't want to mess this up. They worked hard on it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> but I went for it anyway. I was hungry, by God. This is a perfectly spiced piece of tofu. Now, obviously, tofu absorbs the things around it. That's kind of what tofu does. And I'm not somebody that eats tofu very often, maybe once a year. I mean, it's rare. But again, I was going for something a little lighter today, and I was so impressed here. Not only did it absorb all those flavors around it, but there was a zest to this tofu and sort of a tangy nature of all of that reduction that just made me say, all right, this surprises me on every level. Every single level did my my server recommended it. He shared with me you should go for it. You know, even if you're not somebody that eats tofu very often, you might like this. All the veggies, lemony. They had a peppery kick to it. Uh, there were so many flavors all throughout this plate that it was like an expedition on its own, right? A journey and an adventure on its own. It's what the restaurant promises, and with this plate, I absolutely got it. Truly impressed with what came to me in the main course. And after that perfect flavor profile of a main course, it was time for dessert. And with my server's recommendation, I went with the passion fruit tapioca cream, chocolate crumbles there at the rim, citrus fruits throughout, and coconut cream layered on top. In a word, refreshing. It was something that I thought, all right, if they sold this in a window along the route that I take to Pandora World of Avatar, I would stop off, I'd buy this on its own. It reminded me, I think, most of a parfait. Now, not to say it's like a parfait, but it's similar. And I would say that if you're looking to compare it to anything, that would be it. However, the fruit inside, perfectly ripe, 
and I would say not overbearingly sweet. I kind of thought that I was going to be blown away by the sweetness of it all and it might be too much. It ended up being a perfect balance, I think, with the coconut cream and the fruit itself. It ended up being the perfect balance of subtlety. And you notice here the tapioca, right? So I'm like, I'm not 95 years old. Why am I eating tapioca for, you know, an early dinner? My blue my blue plate special, what am I doing? The tapioca made this so airy and light that it did feel like I barely ate anything for dessert, but I satisfied my sweet tooth. That's how good it was. So again, if this is something that you're looking for, if you're, you know, maybe having eaten all the big heavy stuff in terms of your meal and you're looking for something just a little lighter on the back end, this would be perfect for you. Paper check holder had arrived. This is something that they are giving everybody across Walt Disney World property right now with their check inside so that they can easily dispose of it afterwards. My soft drink, $4.29, my appetizer, $10, my dessert ended up being $9, and my tofu main entree, $30, bringing the grand total to $56.76 for one person. Obviously, a very pricey restaurant, very upscale, this location, certainly one that when I looked around, the majority of people around me tended to be there celebrating something or dining for a special occasion, which I can understand, given the price point. Also to the right of me, just out of frame, is former WWE superstar Zack Ryder, uh, current AEW superstar Matt Cardona. Uh, apparently, he likes dining here as well and was talking about how much he loved Disney on top of it. thought that was a nice touch. Here at Tiffin's, it is a location that sends you off with a very touching gift, and that is a piece of unique art that was drawn up by famed Disney Animal Kingdom Imagineer Joe Rohde. Joe Rohde is the famed Imagineer that helped create almost everything Animal Kingdom. And across his voyages and his journeys to create the park, he experienced and saw a lot of things. And so in this limited series, uh, your server will provide you a piece of his artwork towards the end of your meal. And you can get, I believe, up to three. It's a set of three. All right, final review time. So is it safe? And is it comfortable? Some of the things that we're rating here during the Walt Disney World in Pandemic series. I'll tell you from a safety standpoint, I really appreciate how all the restaurants are requiring you to check in outside via your My Disney Experience app, letting them know that you have arrived. And then they send you a text message that essentially says, we're ready for you. And then when they bring you in, they ask you to sanitize upon entry. They've got some hand sanitizer there for you, or they ask you to use the restroom. And then from that point, they will walk you to your table. All tables are, of course socially distanced and uh, you'll notice that around me all those little white boxes on the tables those are the tables you can't sit at so they say for your safety this table is unavailable so even in dining rooms like this it felt very empty uh, majority of folks were at a distance from me and at no point did I feel uh, at all like there was somebody hovering near me coughing anything like that from a comfort perspective, plenty of dining room space. In fact, there are multiple dining rooms that you can be sat in. I was in one of them uh, where we had to cross the Nomad Lounge in which to go be sat in. Uh, you do have a dedicated server to your table and each space in here is like a museum. So there's so much to look at. There's so much to kind of like entertain you as you sit. Uh, lots of things to really appreciate about not only Animal Kingdom's creation, but also about your dining area in general. So there was always something to have your eye trained on and uh, learn a little bit more about this famed park. Of course, now you're asking yourself, but is it worth it? That is what I am here to share with you. The price point in this restaurant, obviously very high, is met with the quality that this restaurant puts out. Not just quality in food, but quality in presentation, quality in ambiance, quality in service. The quality across the board matches the price point. And with that, this is a Disney signature restaurant, one of the highest rated restaurants in the Disney portfolio. They list it on their website if a restaurant is called signature or not. So you know what you're getting yourself into. You know that the price point will be probably pretty high uh, if it is a signature restaurant. 
Now the service here was exceptional. My server knew everything about the menu, everything about the ingredients, everything about the expeditions that were gone on, uh, that I saw sort of portrayed throughout this facility. <laughs> when I saw photos, I asked him and he knew all about it. Um, when you have a server that is that well versed in everything regarding the restaurant, you know you're getting somebody very special. You know you're getting somebody that has a heart for what they do. And this is a perfect meal retreat that just absolutely complements Disney's Animal Kingdom. The various dining rooms that I did not get to sit in, the various spaces that I got to also poke my head into and take a look at, uh, were equally as captivating as my own. I would say some were even more captivating, and I was kind of jealous that I didn't get sat in certain rooms. Uh, this is a beautiful facility, and like I said, kind of like a museum, almost, of the explorations for the Imagineers when they were researching Animal Kingdom theme park and going to be building the park right off the bat. This is Kind of what they brought back with them. These are artifacts and recreations of things that they saw themselves. And so you get a unique feeling in this environment that you're a part of something special. And when you can go into a dining establishment and feel like you're part of something special, well, need I say more? You walk away feeling very special. I would say that this dining experience is absolutely worth it if you're looking for very unique food, right? Off the beaten path, not burgers and fries, that's for sure. If you're looking for unique food that uh, sort of expands your horizons, you're willing to pay a little bit, and maybe you're looking to celebrate somewhere, Tiffin's would be a wonderful recommendation from my perspective. All right, ladies and gentlemen, remember that this is one part in a multi-part series. We've done Walt Disney World in pandemic videos on Magic Kingdom, Epcot, the full Animal Kingdom Park experience, Hollywood Studios. We've now done dining reviews on various locations. Chef Mickey's at the Contemporary Resort. You can also check out dining reviews at Liberty Tree Tavern and many more dining reviews on their way because this is a very unique time to be experiencing Walt Disney World. If you're looking to make that personal decision, if you're looking to make that personal choice as to whether or not you should visit Disney World during this global health crisis. These are the ways in which we are trying to help you with that so that you understand this is how it's done and this is what's expected of you. Make sure that you are subscribed for all of our future content and that you've turned on that notification bell. If you haven't already, make sure to give us a big old thumbs up. Like I said, helps keep the video rolling, rocking, and seen. And uh, I gotta tell you, this has been a pleasure. As always, I've enjoyed my Self. Hopefully we will see you next time for an all-new Walt Disney World Dining in Pandemic.